What's up, everyone? This is Chris with All Volleyball, and we are where the game begins. I am back for another chat with pro player and member of the AVB family, TJ DeFalco. Thanks for having me. It's uh, It's been a while since the last time we chatted, and uh, we wanted to sit down and just uh, see how things are going since you headed over to Japan to play in the pro leagues. What have uh, your first couple of months been like over there living in Japan? Have you been able to take in a lot of the culture and some of the sites? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, in the beginning, um, about three, four weeks ago was when pro season was, or uh, preseason was going on. So there was a lot of like downtime, not very many matches were being played. Uh, a lot of training, kind of getting the body back to, to high tip top shape for quality to play and got to experience a bunch of different cities, went around and traveled, uh, with my girlfriend and, and the other foreigner over here. That's kind of how it works. With the with two foreigners per team, is you kind of end up linking up with the other foreigner a bunch, and I absolutely love it here. It's been nothing but nothing short of amazing, from the food to the culture to the people. To I mean, driving around this country is just awesome. How would you say living in Japan differs from living in some of the other countries that you played in? Yeah, well, one that I, that I got what I just mentioned was the driving. Uh, drive on the left side of the road on the right side of the car. So it's completely backwards from the States, which is very interesting. The first three days of driving, I was like, this is my first time ever driving. Um, <laughs> but that, that, that was an experience in itself and it was really fun. Uh, and, and then simply everywhere you decide, you're like, if you want ramen, if you want some uh, yakuniku, which is a Japanese barbecue, if you want sushi, if you want this, you want that, everything is amazing. Um, so that's that's one of the things that differs is that a lot of the other countries that I've been to, there are some areas and or places in that country that maybe would have some not for your taste kind of food. Yeah. And for, for my taste of kind of food, everything here in Japan is just amazing. Top shape. So uh, that and then and then just the, the team, the, the guys are so fun and friendly, even though they speak hardly any English. And I know we're going to talk about a lot of the communication stuff in the entire terms of that but it, it's everything's been different but everything has been so much fun well it's, it's great to hear that you're kind of fitting in and you know getting all set over there um it really seems like a perfect place for you yeah so you're playing for jake tech stings aichi out of uh karia i don't know if yep, that's that right but i'm hoping i pronounced it right <laughs> you did. Oh, great. Um, so you guys are off to a strong start with uh, a 3-1 standing, and you're tied for second in the league. Uh, looks like you split matches with uh, VC Nagano, and then you guys uh, swept your neighbors, uh, the Nagoya Wolf Dogs. Uh, what are some of the factors you feel like have kind of contributed to your team's real strong start at the beginning of the season? Um, yeah, I think one that... I had a good chunk of time here with the team in the preseason preparing and getting used to and, and, uh, feeling out how the rhythm of the of the game goes over here. Cause it's definitely a lot different than anywhere else in the world. Um, so I think that the, the amount of time that I had here in the beginning was good, but also one of the things in this league is that every weekend we play two games, the same team twice for the next six months, almost. So we have 40 more games. Um, so the, the test and the, the trial of this league is how well can you compete two days in a row? And that first weekend, I think for a lot of teams, some teams, you know, passed that test with flying colors and we had, we had a good test of, we didn't pass with flying colors. If we came in the first day last, last weekend against uh, Nagano and we had a good, you know, ready to show our fans that it was the home game and had the, the desire and the fun and the fight to play. Uh, and then uh, underestimated our teammates for the second day and they came out and they beat us. So that was a nice little test of, uh, or like a, an example for this league. of like, yep, you got to be ready to play two days in a row. Um, and then we took that lesson directly into the next weekend when we played the Wolf Dogs. And it was, it, this league is going to be very tough because yeah. two games in a row is a lot. Yeah, yeah, back to backs. I'm sure there's not much recovery time in between those. You pretty much dedicate your entire weekend to to playing nonstop. 100. percent There's yeah. nothing else that can possibly go on besides resting and recovering 
for that next game. Because if you don't, then you're, you're already at a loss. Yeah. How would you say the the fans have been over there, um, especially you know, again comparing to other countries that you played in, uh, just a general sense of um, how responsive they've been to the team, uh, you know, how they've been to you. I don't know how how it's been in the past years because this is technically the first year of uh, of the new league. It's called the SV League. Before it was called the V League, um, and it's incredible. The amount of fans that we have every game is everywhere, everywhere we go is sold out for, I think for all of the teams, really, they're all sold out. Um, you can't, if you go ex- like four, three and a half, four weeks before the game starts and try to get tickets, they're, they're, they're sold out. It's impossible. So we have to go five weeks before the game starts to get tickets for our families, to get, if anybody wants to come, whatever, we have to know and let the, let the club know five weeks in advance. So that just speaks to how, like dedicated and insane this fan base is. You mentioned a little bit about um, some of the communication barriers. You know, you're one of the outsiders, one of the the foreigners uh, on this team. How do you guys, you know, keep up the communication on the court? Um, Just not having, you know, a, um, a shared language. That's no matter where you go, what what country you go to, that's always going to be a problem. Um, But thankfully English is alert. Luckily I'm very lucky that English is one of the, is the biggest language in the world that most people have to learn. If they, if they do intend to travel internationally or they have international people around them, the English is the one that they have to kind of go to. So for the guys that are on the Japanese national team, they speak pretty good English. They understand because their coach, uh, was French or something like that. And had to, he spoke English to them for the last set eight years or nine years, whatever it's been. So they had a pretty good understanding of English. So I can communicate with them, which is nice because they're all on the court with me. And then some of the other guys have had the exposure to foreigners a little bit. And so have, have a little inkling as to what English is and all that, that, that kind of stuff. Um, and then, all the like Luca Relli, who's the, the other foreigner with me, is exposed to f- the foreigner stuff all the time. So has to also speak English. So he speaks great English. And what's kind of nice and lucky for me is that the coach uh, is Polish and speaks English. So I'm in a very easy position with the language and the communication barrier of all things. Um, but it would be it's diff- more difficult for the other players that like that we have what, a player from China that doesn't speak in hardly any English, doesn't speak Japanese. And it's pretty, I would imagine it's pretty difficult for him. Right. Yeah. It's, it's you, Lucarelli, and then, um, also the Chinese player. Yeah. Is the three foreigners for this team. As the rest is all Jap- uh, Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how's your Japanese coming along? <laughs> I could say hello. I could say good morning. Uh, I can say nice work. Like something you say after the end of a work day and you're kind of signing off. Uh, and that's it. Hey, do you know, that's all you need for now. <laughs> that's it. That's the, 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 th- the three horsemen I have of Japanese. That's all I need. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would imagine you probably have a couple of phrases, you know, in Italian and Polish as well. Um, considering like you've played in three different countries professionally in, in the last five years, Italy, yeah. Poland, and now Japan. Um, it seems pretty common. Uh, in professional volleyball that players kind of switch teams and play in different countries a lot. Um, what would you say, are there, you know, really big driving forces um, that kind of help you make those decisions to switch over to, you know, another club or another country to play in? Yeah, there, there's a lot of different factors that go into it, you know, because from the personal side of things, from, for, from my side, I have always wanted to play in Japan. Purely because of the enjoyment that I've had every time I've come here with a national team that I wanted to be fully immersed into the culture, the food, the people, everything to do with Japan, because whenever I would come to the national team, I'd only be here for nine to 12 days. So I got a little taste of it every time I came, but then it was like, man, I really want to just go live there. So that was where my desire came from transitioning from Poland to um, Japan. But then there's other people that, go where the money takes them, go where they can get the best contract. And, and, and so then that's their personal desire. And then there's some that want to go 
play in a specific league for the, like in Italy for the food and Italy for the the natural beauty of the country or Poland for the, the pure high level of the league, and you'll play consistent high level volleyball. And there's a lot of various different things that people go through in terms of choosing a team. Um, but mine was the fact that I, I really, really wanted to come to Japan for a very long time. Well, sounds like you kind of hit the nail on the head and you know, you're able to play in probably a dream league for you right now. Yeah. Really, it is. Yeah. Um, speaking of the league, it, it sounds like there's been, you know, a big influx of really big names from around the world, you know, coming to the SV League, uh, including um, Ricardo Lucarelli. It seems like Japan is really trying to kind of up their up their ante and elevate the league to the level of, you know, other top leagues like Italy, Poland, Brazil. Um, what do you kind of see, you know? in in the future for um japan's pro leagues i've i've kind of heard some rumors through the mill about the 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 things that they want to do because obviously with making this change to from the v league to the sv league they want to start try to compete for the best league in the world which already with the first move it's like pretty close to being one of the like it's uh, the volleyball here is so technical and so complete that it, it's hard not to compete for the with, with the rest of the world, um, but then there's there's future moves. Well, from what I've heard, I'm not I'm not confirming any of these, but they're going to continue to expand the foreigners in this league, and so that just shows that one they have the understanding that the whole world needs to kind of be included in the league. So all the different foreigners that need to be allowed to do this and to you know bring other players in because that's where the national teams where all the fans mostly get their influence of volleyball. They see Japan playing Brazil. They see Japan playing Poland. They see Japan playing uh, USA. They see Japan playing Italy. And they see all these huge names. And then they they have a, a whole a league in their home country, which is amazing. But they don't they don't allow foreigners. So then they needed to move into allowing that to continue to expand their reaches. Because now that now that they expanded the two, now this my team has USA fans looking in on it, and now it also has Brazilian fans. And so now we're getting a double. And so the more and more foreigners that they'll allow into this league, the more fans and outreach and growth will come to this league. And so it it comes hand in hand with all the different countries of influence that they're allowing into this country. And so it's going to continue to get better. And without, if not, it's already one of the contenders for the best league in the world. It will be very soon. Yeah, I mean, considering the sellout games five weeks out, uh, I think yeah. they're not just nothing good. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so kind of switching back to something on the home front, we heard about you being inducted this year into the Wall of Honor at Long Beach State, along with Kyle Ensing and Josh Tuaniga. Yeah, it, it just it kind of took me back a little bit. Um, and it, it gave me a, a ton of honor and respect for remembering those times that I had with those two boys and uh and at that school. You know, and we did everything together you know me kyle and josh were were the big three as you say or whatever of long beach state and uh it makes me very happy and proud to be able to be permanently on something on the wall of honor or whatever for that school because we did a lot for that school but then there's also no way to really quantify how much that school did for us and allowed us to be in the places we're all still playing pro in the in the different leagues that we're playing in and continuing to explore this career as a viable option. We wouldn't have been able to do any of this stuff without Long Beach State. Yeah. So, I, you know, it makes me very happy for us three that we have have that honor, but then the honor is goes all the way back to the school, just like the opportunities that they opened up for us. For sure. I'm sure it brings back a lot of college memories. Yeah, it does. Well, um, you know, just wanted to uh, say thanks again uh, for starting your morning off with us. Uh, I know it's, probably about nine o'clock there. So we just wanted to wish you and your team uh, the best during the rest of the season. And, you know, we'll be watching from across the pond and, you know, hoping for the best. Yeah, I really appreciate it.